This is the Dry Cereal Podcast, episode On seven. this episode of the Dry Cereal Podcast, Neighborhood News. Trump leaves it up to the governors to reopen the economy amid the protests in some states and the Black AF Review. All that and a little bit more coming up next. This is the Dry Serial Podcast, episode number seven, and we are back. What's going on, Jatem? Oh, nothing much. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a little break, like a like a two week break. So, as we are back in the studio, um, anything exciting happened in the last two weeks since the last time we recorded? No, um, I just really appreciated this meme that was going around that asked you to name uh, old black men names. And oh, oh yeah, um, that's actually my question of the day today too. Because <laughs> I I need you to defend uh, to defend your um, your statement. All right. And I need your friend to defend her statement too. Oh, okay. Because it didn't make sense. I don't get it. Okay. But we'll we'll talk about that a little later though. Okay. But besides that. That was the most exciting thing that's happened for me in the past week. I saw you went on another bike ride. Mm -hmm. I think. I saw that right, right? Yep. I went to Gwen Falls Trails. That's Gwen Falls is like Baltimore. Baltimore it's like right? the county. County? Close to the county. Okay. Yeah, it was really refreshing. How many miles is that? I'm not sure how many miles I did. Um, we didn't go far on the trail, but we mostly just rode uh, from pretty much my neighborhood there. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I wasn't even tracking my miles. Uh, is that your friend that you normally go on the ride uh, with? I don't really have a regular set of people I go bike riding with anymore. Uh, but um, that was like our second bike ride together. Oh, that's mm -hmm. exciting. I'm, I can't remember the last time I rode a bike. Really? Yeah, like it's been a long time since I actually. I recommend it for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, like you'll be out there for two hours, but it feels like you've been gone for like three days. For really? Yeah, it's just uh, it's a great way to get your mind off things. That's cool. Um, I don't know what did I do these last two weeks. Um, I just worked mainly. Uh, oh, I do have some news though that. So during these two weeks. I, I was actually able to do a lot of editing for our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, Dry Serial TV, on YouTube. You like that plug? But what did you think of the of the uh, of the, the thumbnails I was sending you? Um, I liked them. I felt like none of them were embarrassing. Okay, except for the one you're like, why why is his hand? Oh, one of them had a caption I didn't understand. Which it was one? like, I don't recognize you. The caption was, I don't recognize you. Oh, that, uh, I was just saying, I was just trying to, like, play with names for the, uh, for the episode or whatever. But when I say I don't, re I don't recognize you, I'm, I'm talking about, like, the, like, the economy. Or what, oh. like, like, for, like, like, before and after. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I was going for, but people might not understand that, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I got a, I got a lot of, uh, videos done during this time, um, so I would, like, cause I'm always trying to like figure out how the, how like the YouTube algorithm works. Mm -hmm. So like, I have this software, um, that like, like it kind of like scores the YouTube channel and, and like gives you a score of your videos mm -hmm. for how well it will do if people are searching for like certain things. Oh wow. So I've, I've just been, I've been playing with that for like the You're last. You're such a nerd Roger. Yeah, I am. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how, to, how this shit works, though. So there's an algorithm for YouTube yeah. that pretty much ensures that your videos will be viewed. Right, but but like, like there's a lot of, like, it, that, they, they change the algorithm all the time, but there's, there's so many variables. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, and one of the variables that I've seen just of all the YouTube videos that I watch is like, oh, you need to have a good thumbnail. Oh. So people click on, so people will want to click on it and actually like watch the. Got it. That makes sense. Watch it, right, so. 
that was the thing. So like I know thumbnail is part of that. Um, the title of the video is part of that too. Mm -hmm. um, like there's so many other things that I realized. Like your descriptions, your uh, your metadata, like mm -hmm. like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I speaking gibberish right now? No, that makes sense. You makes sense. Okay, yeah. So it's like a, just like a lot of stuff that goes into that. But I also was working on. So like I've been sitting on like ideas for like TV shows for like years, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I actually want I'm, at, I'm actually trying to try to produce one. This TV show that I was telling you about. I'm not gonna say it on camera, but if you know me, you know what I'm talking about, right? But so the, yeah, so I've been sitting on this for three years, or actually it's, it's probably like five years now, five or six years actually I think. But so. I actually like like put together they call it the treatment. It's basically like like a summary of, of three shows, three mm -hmm. TV shows, or actually yeah, three TV shows that I want to like get try to get made somehow. All right. So and I actually have a conference call with a producer tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I submitted all my information on this on this website, right? Mm -hmm. And. I actually got to like pick a producer that, that I, I think might be interested in my product or whatever so and then like I gave her like the three outlines that I did and I want her to like tell me which one she thinks could work the best and like basically like she's going to give me like an outline of like which market she thinks would be good for whatever like like mm -hmm. like how to distribute it whether it should go on like Netflix or like, like cable TV or how much you have to pay for that? Like I paid um I paid like three ninety seven. Mm. Similar, but I already made the money back, so it wasn't a waste to me, whatever. But I feel like if I'm gonna, if I'm, if I'm trying to like, like do this for whatever, I'm, I need yeah. to, I need to invest in myself somehow, whatever. Yeah. So, so you, there may be a chance that she might pick mine to want to produce, mm -hmm. but even in the event that she doesn't, at least the I'll, advice is good. yeah, the advice, and then I'll have an outline, and I'm, and maybe I'll have even more clarity as to how to get somebody else to look at it now. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's what I'm really going for, whatever. So whether she takes it or not, cool, but mm -hmm. or hopefully she does, but it but even if she doesn't then I'll at least have more clarity. That's dope. But so guys keep your fingers crossed. Um but with that said, I have a joke. You ready? Mm hmm Jatem, what makes a good tongue twister. Uh, I give up. Well, it's actually hard to say. Is that it? Yeah. Get it? That might have been the worst joke, Roger, since we started the show. Well, that was the worst one. Least song. impactful. <laughs> Not the worst, because they're all bad. <laughs> they're all bad in a good way. I got it Next up, we have Neighborhood News, and we will be right back. Thank you for tuning in to Neighborhood News. I'm Roger Haynes. And I'm AZ. Today's top story. A horse rescued from an old water well in Oklahoma. And as it turns out, the horse could not see that well. The Oklahoma City Fire Department said it took about an hour and a half to rescue the horse that fell into an old water well on its owner's property. And after a brief medical evaluation, the department said the horse did not appear to have any serious injuries and is in a stable condition. Now, things are a bit shaky in California as a 3.6 magnitude earthquake strikes the LA region. There's no telling who's at fault. Lindsay Lohan teases an album release date for the first time in 15 years. But don't be fooled, this is an apparent trap. What a mean girl. Nearly 100 beehives stolen from Northern California Orchard. 
the buzz is authorities will be conducting a sting operation. A trio of pigs wandered into a grocery store in Russia and raided the liquor aisle. Apparently it is true that these little piggies went to the market. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it now. Alright guys, we are back. Now a lot of talk's been going on about no, about when the economy is going to reopen. And I know originally Trump wanted, I think he wanted everything to be back to normal by April 30th, mm -hmm. right? So when he was, you know, pretty much his whole presidency has kind of been like, this, this is what I want to do, I want to do this. And like, not, you know, he doesn't really want to listen to other people. But now, I think he realized that things opening the 30th are not realistic and he has now given the governors of each state full reign to make their own decisions about when they want to reopen their state. Mm -hmm. But my thought on that is I just think that Trump didn't want to be blamed if something worse happened, which is why he did that for each state because he could have, because now, because you no, know, he likes to point fingers all the time, right? So he's just going to say, oh, well, I told, like, I gave him a free reign, but he said that, he said that he thought it was good enough, so that's why they opened, but I mean, that's not my fault. Which is, I mean, I think that's why he did it, but have you seen the, or did you hear about the protesters? Oh, yeah. Like, my friend sent me an article, and I think Michigan was one of the first states to, to have protesters yep. in Lansing. But me personally, like, I don't, I mean, nobody wants to be in this, in this, in this situation. I mean, because this is inconvenient for everybody. So I really don't think protesting is going to, is going to do anything well, I, in this I situation. Think, I think they're concerned about the economy. It's like, either it's like a lose-lose situation. If you yeah. open it back up, people are going to die. Yeah. If you don't open it up, it's going to be pretty tragic for Yeah, like I agree. I mean, like there's a lot of, I'm sure a lot, a lot of businesses are hurting right now. Yeah, cities oh. are about cities to be hurting. hurting. We're, we're running out of money. Um, but I just think like there's no, but like there's just the articles that I've read, like there hasn't really been anything saying like, what a, like, what's the criteria for, for, the, for them to reopen the states or the economy? Like, there's no criteria. It's just like, oh, well, we just got to see when the deaths plateau. It's basically what they're waiting for, to me. So they, the, the deaths have not started plateauing, correct? I think they, they're slowing down, but not plateauing. Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, like, what's the number of the, of the, that it's going to be when the plateaus up? Well, plateauing is just... It's no longer going up. People are still going to be dying, yeah. but they're going to be dying at a consistent rate. So, I think once they start slowing down, it's a good sign that it's about to plateau. And I heard New York, they're slowing down. I've heard New York. Like, is that the only state that they're, that, that they're slowing down now? Um, I don't know. I haven't been watching and listening to the news enough to know, but I think so. I'm not the fact New York. Governor Cuomo said this wasn't God, this was us. We slowed down on the, the trajectory of the virus, not God. Did, was he the guy that said that there are things more important than living? Did you hear about that? No, 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 no. That wasn't Cuomo. But what, what was I that? mean, I, I can't remember. There's been like a lot yeah. of really crazy stuff. So like, there was a Michigan legislator who wore a Confederate flag mask. <laughs> so that. So to like the House of Reps or something like that. I'm terrible with government and stuff, but he was on his job. He was working in front of everybody. With the and Confederate then he had flag. The Confederate flag. And to me, I appreciate that because it makes you aware of what this is really about. Like, there are people who don't care if people are going to die 
because the assumption is the majority of them are going to be black people or poor people, and they don't matter. So why should we? Why should everyone hurt for black people? That's why I think those people are protesting. Like they just see it as being irrelevant. They just, yeah, most of those because those white people that were protesting, those black people that are out there, right? Yeah, so, predominantly yeah. white, look like you know working class hillbilly-ish type. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that those are the type that are racist. I think you can't really put a category on racism. I think no one is immune from it. Yeah. And I think liberal, educated white people get a pass a lot of times for their racism. So. <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. Um, and it's just like, I've just heard that I know, at least from Maryland, that they're gonna start. I guess what I guess with this three-phase plan, mm -hmm. or whatever. Have you you heard about that? Yeah. Where it's like they're gonna start letting. I think at the beginning of May, actually, they're gonna start letting some businesses open back up. Mm. And then if they don't really, if they don't see a spike in deaths or cases, then it might it might just be deaths. So I don't know if it's deaths and cases or just deaths, but. Then they're going to go to phase two, let you know, a, few, a few more businesses open, and then kind of sit back and wait to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I still think, like, we'll, it'll, it's probably going to be, like, mid-summer by the time, like, everything's, like, really back to... I don't think so. Do you think it'll be after that? I think Trump is saying now that at the end of the summer it'll be fully open, like, the economy will be fully open. At the end of the summer? Yeah. But I've heard that's not even... I think over the next year at least, it's going to be like a process of like restricting and then loosening those restrictions and yeah. then restricting again. Like it's just going to be like. But I think I think even even if the economy is or once it does get back to normal, I think that masks are going to be a part of everyday life now. Everyday life forever. I mean, for an extended period of time, I don't. Know, I think at I, least three like, years. Like I, that's what I've been saying. Yeah, I think yeah. I just think that. Places of, places of business are gonna, they're, they're probably gonna start limiting the number of people that can, that can go into each each space now. It's gonna be harder to go out to, just to go out, I think. Um, yeah, definitely restaurants. Yeah, and it, like, limit the number of people, you have, you have to wear masks, so it's probably, like, you guys be six feet apart. I think college is gonna be online. Nobody's going to pay like $50,000 a year to yeah. take the risk of dying. Yeah. That was like, that, like, that was something. Like, I, if I was a, if I just got to Hampton, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then I had to leave to go, to come home. Yeah. Like, I, like, I wouldn't like that. That'd be a huge all. interruption. Yeah, it's like a yeah. huge interruption. And I, and I purposely left to, left Michigan. I don't, I don't, I don't want to basically leave to go right back to do classes online. Yeah. But, I mean, hopefully, think we'll have some sort of normalcy soon. Mm. At least, at least, like, I just want to be able to maybe, like, go out, go out to eat or go to happy hour or something. I don't even, I don't really require a lot. I just want to be able to do something every once in a while. Like, like, this is, this is a, I mean, well, it's inconvenient for everybody. Inconvenience is the wrong word, but... I'm saying like I'm just getting tired of like being cooped up in the house all the time. So it's like I basically just go to work, come re come record the podcast, and then try to tell jokes mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that's really all that's really all been doing. But I've I've actually been able to save some uh some pretty good money. Whatever. I have a goal. I have a goal that I'm trying to get to um before this is over. So. But do you have anything else to add? Um, I think it's gonna be about three more years until things go back to normal. Yeah. It's a long yeah. time. We'll see. I could be completely wrong. I mean, I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But guys, we will be back talking about hashtag Black AF review. Alright, so
so there was a show that came out recently on Netflix and the I guess in the past week in the past week um, by the creator of Blackish right? and the show is titled hashtag Black AF which I watched the show like there were some episodes that I missed but I pretty much saw the show and from what I did see I thought the show was fun um, just like the certain scenes, I, and I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to do it like, like Larry David, and with Curb Your Enthusiasm. But I thought, me personally, I thought this was a little bit better than Curb Your Enthusiasm, though. Mm. Why? Uh. <clears throat> It was like from a younger perspective. I mean, no, no. Larry David is older, you know, right? And I mean, me personally, I just felt like I could relate to things that, or maybe not relate necessarily, but I thought things that he was that Kenya was going through were funnier than what Larry was going through, mm -hmm. and like, and like the stuff that Larry would talk about on the show as mm -hmm. opposed to Kenya. What are your thoughts on the show? Uh, I know you have a strong opinion. Yeah, immediately I was just like, what does this guy have with making like his lead, female lead family like racially ambiguous? I'm really critical when it comes to like representation and how we're presented. In the media, I can't help it. It's like something, once you become aware of it, you can't turn it off. So that had my antenna up. So I didn't really come into it with the best attitude. Maybe I shouldn't have read articles. Like, I read some articles about it. And they were basically saying um, that he kind of centers his whole existence on the show based off of, number one, people being upset that they don't acknowledge. That him being upset that people don't acknowledge his superiority He's like really thinks highly of himself and he just doesn't feel like he feels like his family takes him for granted and everybody else and but the second thing that really bothers me and I noticed it when I watched it how it's almost like it's not really a black show when I think of a black show I think of a show being kind of like made for black people so they're gonna say certain things and they're gonna not explain certain things and then maybe explain certain things from the perspective of like black culture. Mm -hmm. So it seems very performative for white people. Like it's very tuned into the white gaze. Like are you familiar with like the male gaze and the white gaze? Mm -hmm. So the male gaze is like how we watch a mo movie, excuse me, a music video. That's a better example. Um, but they'll like zoom in on the boobs and then you know they'll zoom in on the ass and they just always present women in a way that's like very object uh, 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 where they're objectifying women almost like in a way that's like porn like mm -hmm. um, just pay attention to different movies you watch everything is told from a perspective and it's like yeah. whose perspective are you telling this story from so that makes me cringe a little bit. I feel like, I think we've gotten to a place where we don't have to tell stories to make them feel comfortable. Like, I, I really do feel like that show is intended to be informative for white people. It's almost like a safe way for white people to get to know black people on their own terms. Like, it, it's, it's, not, it's not black. It's not a show that's black. Because there's certain things that we know that he goes out of his way to highlight and explain on the show. <clears throat> um, like I, I see what you're saying. However, so I know so people were comparing, you know, the show to oh, it's just like a just like a cheaper version of Blackish. Cheaper? Why cheaper? Yeah. I guess probably just not, people probably just think it's not done as, done as well. Oh. As black or whatever, but, like, if people are comparing it to that, and people are saying it's like a similar show, like, 
I don't think I don't recall people being this. If it's the same show, whatever. I don't recall people being this up, uptight about Blackish when that first came out. Mm-hmm. I think there were conversations about that show being that way. But then again, maybe not. But I feel like he kind of picked up the coonery. But, alright, so, but I will say I have to say, it's like, no, I haven't, no, I'm not, I'm not really like an entertainment guru or anything like that, mm -hmm. even though I'm trying to be, though. Claim it. I'm trying to be. But yeah, you guys can check us out at Drive Serial TV on YouTube. Just tell us like when I do that. But, <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, like, so I'm not an entertainment guru with that, right? But my theory is that... He did well on Blackish. Blackish was a, I mean, he probably made a lot of money doing Blackish, right? Let's face it. And when shows tend to do well, they'll have a spinoff of another show, or because they do it in movies all the time. Like for a prime example, Fast and the Furious. There, there don't need to be ten movies in Fast and the Furious, but those movies make so much money that they just keep. Making making mm -hmm. more Fast and Furious movies, and I think there's no I think there's another one coming out. But just the movie does so well. And I remember when that movie came out, it was yeah, I was, was in like, England, and people were like revving up their engines in the parking lot of the uh, movie theater. Yeah, <laughs> they were that like, excited about it. But I haven't seen any of those movies since. I don't think I watched. I don't think I've seen Fast and Furious. I mean, they're still great movies to me, but there definitely didn't need to be 10, 11, 12 movies. But I just think that Blackish did well, and that, and then he, I guess he, I guess the opportunity came along. It's definitely a great opportunity. I yeah. will say that, and yeah. a lot of people are like, "Man, just give him some credit for making it this far. Like, don't hate on him." Yeah, it's but like, I feel like. And plus, and plus, like I, I will say that, like, like every every genre has has their target audience. Yeah, he's probably trying to go for, like, yeah, he probably wants to, he probably doesn't want to capture the black audience, but I would go even so far to say is that, like, there are subcategories of black audiences, though. Not just the whole, not, not just the whole black audience, so if it's not, yeah. your, if it's not your cup Somebody of tea. Somebody that watches Medea is probably not going to watch black as fuck. Yeah, so, like, if it's not your cup of tea, then you don't have to watch well, it. Well, it's not necessarily about it being your cup of tea. I could probably watch it and enjoy it. What, like, it's about like what message are you presenting to the world? Like what what themes are you constantly repeating in your art form? Like what's the message and what you're saying and what you're saying? Like like and I like I see I see your point. But I, but I, but I'm glad you brought up Medea because like like there are like Medea's for like a specific category, right? Like usually like like. Like he, like Tyler Perry made it, has made it known that like, like he has a core, a core group of women that what that love Medea. Mm -hmm. Cult right? following. Yeah, he has a cult I following. I remember when they were plays, they had, there was a cult following before they Yeah, so, them. so it, like, and then people aren't like, like I just don't like I just, feel, I just feel like this, like it's it's hypocrisy for you to for you not for you for these same people not to not to judge like Tyler Perry, or. Or even be in the same thing as as black, or, or 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 even not have not have such strong opinions about blackish, but oh yeah, but black as fuck. Uh oh yeah, well, like like he's portraying us in, in a completely different way. No 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 no. Nobody's saying he's, he's portraying us in a different way. In fact, it's probably the same way we've always been portrayed. It's very like white. It's centered in whiteness and the superiority of whiteness. So I don't know if you can see that, but I can. If you read between the lines of the show, there's nothing progressive or empowering about that show. It's kind of like black man chases after the standards of what white culture sees as being acceptable or, or success. And he, he just can never seem to make it. That's like, like his, I just can't like alright, so like I'll, like I'll give you that. I don't, I remember one scene specifically. I don't know if you're gonna watch the rest of the season, 
whatever. But I just remember one scene specifically where where I I agree with that point. But well, I, I, are you gonna watch it? I'll just tell you the scene. Tell me. All right. So it, it was basically about so like like they're at they were at they were at some restaurant, whatever, right? And then he was coming out, and then hit you know obviously he he, he valeted his car because his car was expensive. Probably like a, almost a two hundred thousand dollar car, probably. Mm -hmm. All right. But so then he sees a producer friend, a white guy that he knows. Mm -hmm. He sees a producer friend that he knows, whatever, and then all like they chop it up for a couple minutes, and when they bring the they bring Kenya's car around, then they bring the guy's car around. Kenya has a has a supercar. This is the first episode. Is it the first episode? Yeah, I saw this. Keep going. Is it the first episode? Okay. I I don't think it was the first episode, but maybe maybe it's the first episode. But, maybe, maybe the first episode. but so so he brings a supercar around, and then the guy has a Prius. All right, and then he he um was was taken back that. The white guy didn't acknowledge about his car, or 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 wasn't wasn't impressed is, is the word I'm looking for. Wasn't impressed that he had that car. Okay. But like like that's really the only scene specifically that I that I know where he was just like I I can't believe it. <clears throat> well, that was the bulk of what I saw, and it doesn't take much for me to pick up on what his MO is, you know? Sometimes you have to agree to disagree. I'm not here to convince people to see yeah. that show differently, but I see it this way, and I think we can do better. I think we can do better. I think we can tell more empowering stories without always having to make whiteness the yeah. so ideal. So as an example, like, like if you were if you were Kenya, right? Mm. Like, what would you have done, or what would you portray? I guess as an example for in in the show, if it was if it was Black AF and you were the producer. I think I need more time to think about that. But what I would aim for is kind of like centering the show's ideas and conflicts and themes on things that are unapologetically, unmistakably black. I wouldn't rely on comparisons between black and white achievement or black and white standards of beauty. Like, I feel like Wakanda tried to do that, um, Black Panther, mm -hmm. they tried to do that. They tried not to have, like, a white hero. I think at some point, while the movie was being made, there was, like, a white uh, protagonist, but they got ridden out. I could be wrong about that. Maybe I just made that up. But most of the time when they tell a story that makes it to the box office, White, a white person has to be centered in that film. Even if there's black characters, mm -hmm. a white person has to be the hero. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or they have to be like the primary lead and everybody else is kind of like secondary. Mm -hmm. So Wakanda was, or Black Panther was really unique because it didn't do that. Right. And it was successful. Yeah, of and, and, and a lot of people that I've talked to about Black as Fuck, they're like, you can't get as far as he got without kissing white people's ass. And I'm like, that's not necessarily true. Because Tyler Perry bootstraps all day. Everything he did, yeah. he did on his own. You know what I mean? We might not like his art form or get it all away, but it's for somebody. And yeah. you have to admit, you have to respect his, his hustle yeah. and the success that he's achieved on his own. And then I, I just, just, to, just to say something about Tyler Perry really quick. I watched, I watched his interview on T.I.'s podcast. Oh, T.I. Yeah, it's called Expeditiously. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm dead serious. That's the, the same process. And then, then, like, in the middle of the, in the middle of it, T.I. is capitalizing in, in, in Expeditiously. Whatever, right? So, but it's, it's called, called Expeditiously. 
because he says that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so. But Tyler Perry said, like, no, and I, I, I really respect his hustle because he says even when he was first starting out, mm-hmm. right, uh, he made sure that he owned everything mm-hmm. and that he didn't give away anything. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So even when, even when people were investing in his in his projects, or whatever, he still he he still owned mm-hmm. own owned his projects. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Right. So. Yep. And then he knows that he makes most of his money on the back end anyways. Where he doesn't make a lot up front, but on the back end is where he makes most of the money. What do you mean my back end? Like like like, like residuals and stuff. Like mm-hmm. like for example like like if a movie goes to like the like box office or whatever. Um well, you, well so you have the budget, right? And then all like all this money goes out. So uh, so it's like up front, like he's spending all this money to get to get the props made. And then he makes his money, like for example, like like on like whatever, like the box office numbers, uh, like residual streaming, things like that. So, but I don't know. I guess we're not here to change any, anyone's opinion about Black AF, but just do your own research and come up with your own opinions. And so, with that said, we will be right back with Tim's talk. I'm interrupting the program to tell you something very important. If you are watching this, do not forget to subscribe to the channel or you can follow us on social media. My Instagram is at Rogers Neighborhood and Jatems is underscore J-E-T-A-I-M-E-C. Now, back to the show. All right, so I have been going to this online science policy class on Thursdays at 7 o'clock, this is by NYU, and they um, had a specific subject that came to the class late, but at the end they're like, okay, questions on COVID-19, and um, my question was, would the strategies that countries that have been able to avoid a lot of deaths from COVID-19, and the example I used was, was the Netherlands. Would that, would their, would their strategies apply in the United States? Like, could we have done that and save more lives? So I'm hearing, um, there was an island recently, I think Barbados, the Virgin Islands, I'm not sure. Um, but they've avoided, they, they've avoided any deaths from COVID-19. Um, where else? Not Sweden. Or maybe Sweden? But Vietnam, Vietnam has done a great job. And I'm just curious. You know, would that apply to the United States? Because the United States is getting a lot of criticism about, you know, we're supposed to be the United States and we're supposed to be have all this money and infrastructure and all these smaller countries are able to handle this pandemic better than we can. Um, but one of the things that the Netherlands did that I thought was really cool early on, they mandated that you can only interact with, your, with people at work and people at home and they limited people going anywhere else outside of work and home. So that way you avoid the economy uh, being impacted because people can still go to work in a way. So um, I heard that was like their primary strategy. So I thought that was, that actually gave me hope that this thing isn't like bigger than us because the way the United States acts is like, oh, people gotta die, this is how it is, and this is just so, you know, this is manageable. It's, it's nice to know that this is manageable and it can be managed. We just have the wrong people managing it. And then the other thought I've been having is I think it's interesting the connections. There's definitely some things that aren't similar when you compare the AIDS crisis to COVID-19. But one of the biggest things that sticks out to me is kind of like the lack of urgency and preparedness. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but when in the 80s, when AIDS just started becoming a thing, um, it took grassroots pressure, it took protesting for the government to take AIDS research seriously and treatment seriously. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was being, um, it was, it was only effect. what was the word, what's the term? The only people being affected by it were gay men. Or like 
a population that's seen as inferior, undesirable, and, you know, and and that's that's why they were so slow in addressing it. And I think I think that ha I think that definitely applies to COVID nineteen too. Um, I think from the beginning they kind of knew that it was going to affect people with pre-existing conditions, you know, and people who are in positions of power. And I know from a fact, just from having like relationships with white people that have been transparent with me, that white people are very tribal. And um, if they don't think something is going to be impacted by them, it doesn't matter. And that's the only way that I can rationalize the mayor of um, Las Vegas. I don't know if you saw that. Um, I just know she wanted to open the casinos. Not just that. She wants to offer up oh, her that, city that, as, as a, a control. As a placebo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a control. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, and Anderson Cooper, I've never seen him react like that ever on camera. He was just like, oh my god. Like, he was just sick. And yeah, she, she, was, she was just like, people, people were saying she was drunk. I don't think she was drunk, drunk. I just think that's how white people in positions of power think. They don't make decisions for the greater good. And plus, and plus. Just think about how the Constitution was written. It wasn't written for certain people. Yeah. But we, we act like it was, but it really wasn't. That's just an example. So those are my thoughts. Yeah, and I, like, I, and I definitely don't think that she wouldn't be on the front lines anywhere. What do you mean? Like, she wouldn't be out there. You know, or, like, for example, whatever, like, like casinos are usually heavily populated with, you know, people gambling, whatever, right? So, like, it's like, for example, she wouldn't be, she wouldn't be at the casino gambling. Just as an example, whatever. She's not going to be in an area where, where there are going to be a lot of people. She might. She seems not to be too nervous about this whole thing. I mean, well, like, like, I don't even know what the numbers were in Las Vegas. Were they, were they locked up? I don't know. I don't know. But. But it's interesting how her, her attitude is very common. It's like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like, I just don't remember people in positions of leadership being so shallow when I was a kid. It's like, I mean, I just think, dumber. I just think you're more, <coughs> you're more aware now. And, 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 you're, and you're paying attention. Maybe, but I don't remember the news being this ridiculous. Like, there was a level of dignity. Yeah. Like, we're at least going to pretend like we got our shit together. Yeah, that we, and that we care. And that we care. Mm -hmm. They're not even pretending. Yeah, it's just like, like I, I just think, well, just for, for that example, like, I just think they, they probably lost so much money, whatever, that she's just trying to open up no matter, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care. She's just like, I, I let Las Vegas be the first city to open up, and then we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I saw actually, I, I, just one last note, and then I'll, we'll, we'll wrap the segment up. But I saw an article where it said, um, you know, so Georgia opened on Friday, I believe, right? Or the, or they opened, yeah, I think. I, I and think, then they got reprimanded by Trump for opening too early? Uh. I don't think I recommend it. I just think he, they disagree. They, they opened before even Trump wanted them to open, I yeah. believe. Um, but I just saw an article today that said there were like 635 new cases and 20 deaths since they, since they opened, mm -hmm. apparently. But I guess, I mean, well, I mean, like I said, I, mean, like, I just think there's always going to be, there's always going to be like, Or the, what am I trying to say? Like, there's, there's no right or wrong day to, uh, to open whatever. I mean, it's just, right now it's indefinite. Nobody knows. Nobody knows when. And a lot of know. this is we don't know how this virus yeah. behaves. Like, um, I think it's pretty much been ruled out that once you have the virus, it doesn't mean you're immune to it. So that's also, not, that's oh, not that's a good what, thing. Oh, that's what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then, I, like, I didn't, I didn't hear these, but I heard on the radio today that there were, there are some new symptoms that people. Oh yeah. That, that they found. Neurological symptoms, like people have been having strokes related to COVID nineteen. <clears throat> I heard this a couple weeks ago before I started hearing about the strokes. <clears throat> like I heard, like some people were losing their sense of taste before they got sick, mm -hmm. and some other things that were like neurologically related. But yeah.
yeah, it's a lot we don't know about this virus. <coughs> All right, guys, we will be back with the question of the day. And Tim has got some explaining to do. Explaining. All right, so guys, we're back with the question of the day. And, like, I need to know if this is true. And I need Jitim to explain this because Jitim told me a couple weeks ago, probably that, that Roger is an old name, an old man name. I told you that. Yes. Even before on you- On the meme? No, even before you tagged me on the meme. I don't remember that. Yeah, even before you tagged me on the meme. Because right? I was debating on whether or not Roger was an old man. Yeah. Then, there was a there was a meme that came out, and it said, list old black man names, right? And then, I don't know, was that your friend that, that posted that? Or uh, just, somebody, a friend of mine. Just, okay, so, Jatem's friend put Roger as a as an old black man name. And then I tagged him. And then Jatem tagged me on it. So then I went back and forth with uh, Jatem and her and her your friend <laughs> for like like a a couple times or whatever, right? But I want to know, like how how is Roger an old man name though? Roger, you're the, you're the only Roger I know. But I'm not old though. Unless I really think back, I'm telling you, the only Rogers I've ever met ever met have been like senior citizens. <clears throat> That's a senior citizen. That name's a little outdated. It's not like Demarcus. That's a modern black man. What are you looking for? So, um, you're looking for the <laughs> the list? No, but that, no, no. I'm just saying this. Should, this shows how much people interact with my posts and shit like that. Whatever. It's like I, I, I put on on Instagram is Roger an old man name. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So I got people looked at it, but nobody voted. Oh. Nobody said yes or no. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I don't but, think it's an insult. I mean, no, I mean, it's just, it's, it's fun to talk about, but I mean, I don't think it's an old man name, though. But the old, specifically old black man name. Uh, some of my favorites I'm going to list off. Cleophis. Um, I went to college with a guy named, oh, God, what was his name? Cletus. Yeah, that's an old black okay. name. Do you agree with that? Yeah, but so, but like, how was Roger in that category though? Like, Cletus. Albert is an old black man name, and Albert's in the same category as Roger. It's not like over the top. Albert's not. Uh, Albert is definitely a old. Nobody's named their son Albert anymore. And then my cousin put Commodore on my list. That was our great grandfather's name. My grandfather's name is Joe Fred. Oh, Willie Earl, Willie Ray. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Um, something in my family are like old black men names, like. Anything in oh, I got, Wood, I got one. Roy, um, Otis or Opus. <laughs> uh, Naaman. Naaman. Mm -hmm. How do you spell it? N a a m a n. Where does that name come from? That was my, um, actually that was my dad's, my dad's dad, but it was really his stepfather. Hmm. Never heard that name before. Yeah, name it. Mm-hmm. And then his wife's, or, a black name, old black lady name, Sadie. Oh, big time. And then my mom, so that, that was my dad's mom, and then my mom's mom, her name's Gladys. <clears throat> My grandma's name is Maggie Louise. Maggie Louise? Mm hmm She's from the South, isn't she? Of course. Mississippi? Alabama. Alabama, okay. okay. I've never been to Alabama. Um, yeah. My grandma, other grandma's name is Mary Ruth. Like, they all had two-part names. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was, a, that was a thing in the South, though, I think. I guess so. So I think in, I think in, um, like, my family's from, from Virginia. For the most part, but I think like like they do that down there too. Mm. But so needless to say, the moral of the story is that Roger is not in that category at all. So don't be ageist, Roger. There's nothing wrong with having a whole black man. Uh, 
Well, I just, I just, I just disagree that it's an old black man name. But mm. all right, we'll be back with a positive thought, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. As we wrap up the show, I just want you guys to keep in mind, or at least I want to tell you guys that I know everyone's worried about this COVID-19 when the economy is going to open up and you know all that. But I just want to let you guys know the worrying is interest paid on a debt that you may not owe. Right, I'm going to say that again. Worrying is interest paid on a debt that you may not owe. And I say that to say that most of the things we worry about never happen. Right? So, because and I believe, and I believe the, if I'm going to put numbers behind this, like, like 90% of the things we worry about don't happen anyways, and then the, the other 10% is how we react to the situations that do happen. I would like to see the research that backs that statement. But, I think it's an exaggeration or just like a figure of speech but the point the point of that is just, is, is just to say that like I said most of the things that we worry about don't don't happen anyway and then it's it's really the it's really how how you react to the certain things that do happen to you okay. but guys with that said that's the end of the show and we will be back next week with episode eight until next time